Hi everybody, I wanted to talk about uh, the hot topic at the moment in Scrabble, uh, which is removing slurs from the NASPA word list. Now, I'm a UK player, or I used to be a UK player, uh, was world champion in 2014, I've played a lot of tournaments, run a lot of things. I'm obviously based in North East England, so it doesn't really affect me directly. Uh, just to be clear here, uh, NASPA word list, um, only you only really play it in North America, and it's anything that affects them, um, it's not going to affect what the rest of the world plays with. The two separate word lists, basically. There's a North American one, which is NWL, NASPA word list, and then there's Colin Scrabble word, which the rest of the world uses. The reason why I care about it, though, is because it's about Scrabble, and I basically love Scrabble, and also the kind of habit where things in North America kind of flow over to the rest of the world eventually. Uh, there's an expression that, uh, you know, if North America, well, if America sneezes, uh, UK gets a, catches a cold, uh, there's a little bit of that. So I just want to think that you have to kind of nip these things in the bud. So I wanted to, anyway, I want to address this as much as I can. So in June 20th, so couple of weeks or so ago, uh, we had this announcement from NESPA, which is the North American Scrabble Body Association. So it talks about, um, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and that kind of thing. And uh, basically it all stems from this. And it's uh, uh, from John Chu, who wrote this message in blue to the NESPA advisory board. Uh, I'll read that out for you. So it says, for, felt for a long time there are some words in our lexicon that we hang on to, and they make a mistaken belief that our spelling, our spelling them with tiles and a board strips them of their power to cause harm. Uh, I'm thinking specifically of those words which are used primarily as slurs. That is, words that are used to label someone as being of less value than a speaker based on some innate trait such as gender, race, sexual orientation. Uh, not words that are used to cause offence on scattered Logical, purient, profane, or the grounds. When we play a slur, we are declaring that our desire to score points in a word game, which is obviously Scrabble, uh, is of more value to us than the slur's broader function as a way to oppress a group of people. I don't think this. I don't think that this is the time for us to be contributing di divisively to the world's problems. Um, and it kind of goes on and goes on. And there's some examples here. Uh, since I'm increasingly aware that though that no matter how little meaning matters to us when we're anagramming for top, poster, ginger, then word, or SOH, uh, hose, tells us that it tells us that we've tells others that if they cannot distance themselves from these from these meanings, we neither value their stories nor welcome them into our community. So as a proposal proposal they'll uh, from effective from September the first, two thousand twenty. Um, that all slurs uh, in the list uh, should be removed from play for the NASPA word list, NWL. And so, once again, that's the North American word list. They do also play to CSW, which is what the rest of the world plays to, uh, which is the main one. As I say, it used to be the history of it is, and uh, so NASPA in North America, uh, the, the word list they use, it used to be that... Um, their word list, like predecessor to uh, NWL, that used to be a subset of the rest of the world's word list. I was calling Scrabble words CSW. That used to be a subset. So every word that used to be in their word list used to get added to ours. And it's kind of diverged a little bit, but that's the relationship. It's not a case of, um, you know, when they delete something, we delete it. It um, doesn't generally work like that. But it can do, but in this situation, it's very unlikely that's going to affect uh, the rest of the world. Collins CSW's word list directly, but you never know. Things politically, obviously, can affect down the line. So that was the, uh, the basically the gist of his post, and he, he went on. So there's some there are arguments they're given to removing the slurs. So I mean, some of them are just not really arguments, really, but. Uh, um, so, for instance, I kind of highlight the best one. So, some targeted some targeted individuals are offended by slurs. 
The fact that someone does not perceive or value the harm a word causes or refuse to accept that the person as an explanation how a word causes harm does not reduce the harm caused. Removing slurs narrows the gap between um, the current word list and the school word list, as you can see here. And so, yeah, the school word list, basically how that works is, I'll show you more specifically soon, but uh, the school word list has all these slurs that are going to be mentioned later, has all these words, words removed and also like the profane words, um, the scatological ones, all the rest of it wants to do with sex, everything else. They have all those removed, although there's a caveat to that, which I'll mention later. Um, so that's how it works. Um, so we'll go through some more of the arguments. Uh, the fact that there has been a strong emotional response on both sides of this issue belies the nation that slurs should retain the game when they have no meaning or power. The Dictionaries Committee is taxed, tasked precisely with deciding which words are acceptable, according to precisely laid out rules. In this case, though, it's the advisory board that is discussing changes that roll those rules to add slurs to the already long list of categories that have excluded words, um, and so on and so forth. Um, this one's like similar to the first one we mentioned. Keeping slurs out of the, out of the plain lexicon signals to bigots that their worldview is not generally accepted. Uh, when Scrabble was invented, slurs were not printed in dictionaries, nor were any form of fancy language. They're adding in 1960s, 1970s, this dictionary became more inclusively descriptionist. So those are the main arguments, and uh, John Chu says himself, the guy who's say, posting all this and leading this kind of movement, uh, he says, in a quote, I felt for a long time there are some words in our lexicon that we hang on to in the mistaken belief that our spelling with tiles and a board strips them of power to cause harm. We play a slow reader to claim that our desire to score points in the word game is more value to the... Those than the slurs border function uh, as a way to oppress a group of people. I don't think this is the time for... So I kind of mentioned that earlier, but... So that's basically it. Um, and this is a list of slurs. As you can see, that it's on Scrabble players, easy enough to find. So it's in that, if you put Nasper and Scrabble, you should be able to find it. And here it is. So, so these, this list of words, and you'll see they're all um, alphabetized. Um, so these ones, like prurient, like so that's blowjob, blowjobs, boffed, boffing, boink, all that kind of thing, wanks, wanking. Um, you've got profane, you've got goddamnest, lots of goddams, political, uh, abortuary, uh, communist sympathizer, is it comsymp, whatever, feminazi, these kind of things. Uh, you can see all that going on. And uh, is it atomical? None of these would be removed, it's only the slurs. So you got, so that's like abos and ab aborigine, squaws, tommed, whiteies, all that kind of thing. I won't mention some of them obviously, but uh, you can see all the, the slurs there. And they say you got even slurs generously like poon tangs and things like that. Um, and you've got fairly innocuous ones included. So they're like the slurs for age, for instance, are pretty uh, pretty uh, soft. Um, you've got things like crumblies, grey beard, wrinkly, um, that kind of thing. And physical characteristics, again, not very, uh, not what I would call particularly offensive, but um, so sort of baldy, fats, or that kind of thing. So there's the kind of list. So I say it's only the slurs that it would be reduced, uh, removed. And I say there's one. Per, uh, there's an important clarification. I'll show you some of the. Uh, just so there's a school list. I say it has all those words you could see. All of these are removed. Um, and even the scatological prurient, profane, all all of these are removed. Not just the slurs. And the the idea of Nesper is to basically just remove the slurs from their regular word list and leave all the other stuff. Uh, and this is the, the word of this is what's called a poo list. So these are the words that have been removed from the main list are the ones that you use in schools. And the ones in brackets, this is where important clarification is. So well, the ones in brackets, they have an alternative meaning. So if they have, let's say here, words in brackets are 
related to acceptable words that have a non-offensive definition. So, like ass, you can't have asses. Let me have a look what that means. So, asses is something else. I um, can't remember what it was. It's like, ah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have a difficulty working it out. But, for instance, um, we find a, a more obvious one like boffs, boobies. Like, booby is a bird, I think, and obviously butcher. Um, butcher has got a different meaning, coloured, for instance. Um, yeah, all the ones in brackets have different meanings, which is, which is acceptable. So fisting you can have on its own, but not fistings, because it's the only, the only meaning for that is offensive, apparently. Um, which is reasonable. Uh, but, as I say, you're getting into a little bit of a call the sec with this one, um, like trying to justify some of these things. So, so you can have like, let's say, so hunky you can have, because it means, you know, gorgeous, good looking, all that kind of thing, but not hunkies. It's, there's a lot of that. Um, so say there's P and P's, you can ha you're allowed those, but not the verb. And it goes on and on. And let's see, what else? Oh, and I said Tom is a good example. So and whitey. So whitey is a good example. You can have whitey is in white, um, the color white, more white. But obviously whiteys is in offensive term, racial term. Then kind of that. But you can have whitey itself. So it gets a little bit complicated. Um, so I just wanted to basically point out my own, read out my own kind of response to this. So again, I just clarify how it be implemented. So how it works is, as I say, it only removes words that don't have an alternative acceptable meaning. So if it has an acceptable meaning that's non-offensive, then the word is loud. And that gets, as I say, it's important because you could have words that are offensive, they'll, they'll still be going through because they have alternative meanings. And so I'll get to that later, but my my response is so. Firstly, I want to make the point that there is a, it's perfectly reasonable to have this like schools list, this um, like sanitized word list, and I think it's perfectly reasonable to have. Uh, I don't have a particularly strong argument either way. I'm not I'm not totally fussed whether there's there's a strong word, you know, whether there's a, whether there's schools or youth players, whether the player there's with the school's word list that has all the, all these words removed or not, I'm not, you know, I, I don't particularly care either way. I can I can see both sides of that, and I say when you when you have um, this school list, um, the good thing about that is it's going to be commercially friendly. So it's you know like they can use it in schools and all that, and people aren't going to get offended and all that kind of thing. I mean, there's obviously going to be exceptions, but it's going to be commercially friendly. So you can put it on TV, broadcast it, and all that kind of thing. Obviously, Scrabble, pretty much non-existent as a competitive sport, at least in North America. I mean, obviously, other pockets of the world, it's doing pretty well, like Pakistan and so on. But in North America, uh, not a big deal. Uh, it did used to, I don't know if it's still broadcast on ESPN, that kind of thing, but it, it's had, you know, flirtations with um, your TV and that kind of thing, but it's it's not a, you know... It's pretty much non-existent. Um, so there's that kind of thing. So in that case, you'd certainly use the school list. I just don't see a role for this slurs list. So you you, you have the full list, but you remove the slurs, but you leave all the other offensive stuff in. So I don't really see what the point of that is. It doesn't really fulfill a, a real purpose. But we'll get on to more than that later. So... So yeah, and the other thing about when you play in tournaments and that kind of thing is all it, all it means is if you if you are playing over a board, how it works is you play a word, um, you play your letters down, and you press your clock and that's your move done. Then the other person decides, right, is that word valid or not? You know, I don't I think he's made that up. Uh, then they have the option to challenge the word basically they think a word is made up it's not going to be in the dictionary they can challenge it and then if the words you know they, they go to a computer and it says whether the words in the dictionary or not um you know if it you know so if they challenge it and the word isn't good you know it's not in the dictionary as you know if you're playing in the school 
and you played words like these, you can see on the screen. Uh, if you played those words in the school game and the word got challenged, you would get challenged off. Apart from the ones in brackets, these uh, square brackets. Any of the others would be challenged off because they're not going to be in the, the school list. But on an adult game, they would be allowed. Um, so anyway, it gets challenged. And then obviously if it's not in, it gets removed. And the person who played the move loses the turn, score nothing. Um, but the, 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 the caveat to that is, if the person doesn't challenge the move, whether the word's in the dictionary or not, if they don't challenge it, the, the, the word stays on the board. So you could... It doesn't really work even to that full extent. You could still have a, a game with kids where they just leave, you know, at school level, they, where they leave invalid words on. And it happens a lot of the time, you know, um, because it, particularly in North America, they play what's a double challenge. So it's like if you challenge a word and it happens to be good, instead of the other person scoring nothing, losing their turn, you score nothing and lose your turn. So they get two moves in a row, basically. So it's quite a big uh, gamble to like challenge a word if you if you're not kind of, if you're kind of um and iron about it. It's a big it's a big thing. It, it ends a bit of a like a bluff element to it. So you often have words that aren't good that aren't valid uh, allowed on the board. So that's another important thing to mention. But as I said, I'll go through all lists. So I'll show you some different words for a change. So, so yeah, let me, I'll go through back to the, to the argument. So, so in terms of the, like, question when you say it's, it's not existing, but on the, on the sort of idea of offense, right? Words, words have meaning, right? Undoubtedly words have meaning, but the word is derived from a context. It's, you know, a word in itself doesn't have a meaning until it's the context of the word. It's like we use phrases and sentences and it's all about tone and everything else. It, it, all that context matters. Um, and that's part of, that's a big part of the meaning itself. In a, in a game of Scrabble, the words don't have a meaning. They're just about utility. The, you know, I mean, obviously some people will, you know, they'll play a word and think, oh, that's a nice, nice word and all that thing. Oh, the, oh that's a horrible word, but whatever. But in the, in the context of a game of Scrabble, those games, the, those words only are about how much the score you know, what lets you keep behind and, you know, does it block your opponent's big score and all that kind of thing. It's only it's only about points and whether the word is valid or not. That's it. The meaning has no relevance to the game itself. You don't get extra points if the word is a nice pretty flower. You don't get less points if it turns out to be a horrible disease. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. The, the word is only about whether it's valid or not and how much it scores. And that's pretty much it. Anything else you attaching externally to that game? It's like obviously words are going to have different means to everybody anyway. It's going to be individual. Like certain people, you know, like a lot of the words in Scrabble, the like names, for instance, like my name Craig, that is actually a valid word in Scrabble. And you obviously have people, you know, exes and all that kind of thing, or wife or whatever. And words are going to have different meanings and everybody else. And that's your own thing to deal with. That's not something that's inherent in the game of Scrabble itself. That's something you're bringing to the table. And it's got nothing to do with the game of Scrabble. As simple as that. The Scrabble is all about, as I say, valid or invalid. And that's it. You know, it, it doesn't have a meaning in the, the context of Scrabble. You are bringing it personally to the table. When you attach emotions or feelings or whatever else or memories to, to a word, that's you doing it. It's not the game of Scrabble. It's not the game of Scrabble's responsibility to like worry about offending people. That's it's, that's that's your problem. Offense is yours. It's it, you you take offense. The game of Scrabble doesn't give it. Um, so that's basically what I'd say about the whole offense argument. Um, let's say I mean another point I want to make is like the nuance point of the offense argument is that removing the slurs will signal to others. Others that bigotry will not be accepted, and that's that's but that's but that's the air, their argument. I'm saying. Um, I know that's partly inspired by like Black Lives Matter and all that kind of thing, and they're saying that slurs is about removing slurs is about spreading understanding, tolerance, acceptance, all that kind of thing. Um, but say I mean removing slurs from a word game, it will not. <laughs> let's see. I repeat, it will not 
solve racism, that is removing cancer from the dictionary would not stop people dying from cancer. Um, language does not drive culture or the physical world. It only artic articulates that kind of thing. It only, it only, it only articulates it. Um, no, I don't do a very good job of it sometimes, but language is only there to articulate everything, essentially. It, it, you're, by saying a word, it's not like, uh, you know, like a Dungeons and Dragons game where you, you say a magic word and you know, like a, like a fireball shoots out. That's not how it works. Um, and language only has meaning to the other person if they has meaning to themselves and their own brain can process it. It's like if there's a random word, like animal going past, it doesn't know what a word means. And it's all internalized. It's, it's you that creates the meaning and value and, and emotion and memories, everything else. It's your brain that does all that. So, um, so as I go on and say, one of the great ironies that could be how the policy of removing slurs, um, it would deal with how it would deal with the N word, for instance. So obviously N words, anagram of ginger, I uh, forget after you can figure it out. Um, so as I, as I mentioned earlier, if a slur has an event in, inoffensive meaning, like an alternative meaning that isn't offensive or a slur, whatever, um, as it would have to be a slur for this, this list. Um, if it has a, let's say, if it has an alternative meaning, then it's it's allowed basically. Um, so, so the N word doesn't she freak it out? But as I say, um, what if as I say, if if the word has another meaning that's inoffensive, then it should be allowed. So what happens with let's say the N word? Many in the black community would argue which is fair enough, that they have reappropriated the word, the N-word, and they're using it in a, a friendly sense, you know. Um, so then do you re-include it? I mean, they're making, by omitting the word from the dictionary, from this this list that it would have the slurs removed, by removing it, you're saying, whenever you use that word, it must be offensive. There's no other citations, no other definitions. It must be, a def it must be offensive. And you're telling people that by doing that with a dictionary, by removing it. Do they not realise where that would go, how how bad that could lead up? Um, so, yeah, and I mean, this whole thing about, let's say, it's about, you know, being peaceful, tolerant, acceptance, all that kind of thing. I mean, this debate has been incredibly toxic. <laughs> um there's a lot of anger on both sides. I understand why. I mean, it's just been, I know from uh, one of the main groups, they've just deleted, they just banned all discussion of it. That's how contentious it is. So it's not really sp spreading peace and all harmony and all the rest of it at the moment and tolerance. It's doing the opposite. And we'll show you more of that later. Um, so, yeah. Um, so on we go with this. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, as I say, I mean, it's created anger on both sides. It's making this issue such a big thing. It's attaching a great deal of weight and emotion to it, and also to how it's going to be defined in, de in the dictionary, because that's going to be, make a huge difference how the lexicographer decides uh, how to define it, what they're putting in their, their word list. Because, I mean, obviously this word list, uh, Scrabble word list, is derived from various source dictionaries. So they go off whatever the source dictionaries say. If the source, source dictionaries say there's no there's no inoffensive, like non-slur definition, then it, it disappears with the slurs. Um, if they have an alternative meaning, then it doesn't get removed. So it, it, there's a great deal of responsibility there. Um, and the thing with dictionaries is they're always a few like years behind with this kind of thing because words coming out in and out of favour. Um, as do the meanings, it evolve all the time, and they have to leave a grace period, like particularly with the words that are just coming in and then they go out again. And they obviously don't want to just add everything that's a that's the fad in a particular area or for a particular time. They try and you know wait out to see if it's going to stick or not. And yeah, it becomes very difficult. Um, it's like who would want to make a call when when they're making such a big issue of all this already it's it's on 
lots of news articles and websites already this this kind of news item can you imagine like you're making the dictionary all of a sudden you're being under intense scrutiny uh, scrutiny whether a word goes because in or not or whether it's a slur or not or whether it has an alternative meaning that isn't a slur suddenly all that becomes you know highly charged and emotional and it's a big deal and then like you become somebody who's doing that they become they could become a victim of the cancel culture themselves because they made it they, you know people just decide well they that don't agree with that you know it's just it's a rabbit hole it's impractical for various reasons i've said already but is it to, to reflect those changes and evolutions you're going to keep updating the dictionary but i mean the thing is with scrabble dictionaries they usually the update is usually about every two or three years and it's just you, you're going to lose i mean there's things like karen which has come out which is quite a popular one which i mean yeah it's been around for a while like all things it kind of it just kind of ticks away in the background all of a sudden it comes into great use i mean even that like karen is becoming a little bit more about white people more of a kind of racial slur potentially it just these things evolve all the time so how are you going to stick uh, keep up to date with all that kind of that evolution i just don't know and i mean the the, the the words in scrabble are already kind of hilarious with with slang and things like that they're always a, always a little bit weird with some of the stuff and it's always a little bit kind of like i've never heard the word that used and then you'll use another word that you use a lot in slang terms like i remember when um well i was at school like 25 years ago you, you like you'd hear minger every other word almost every other paragraph had minger in or something and but that that word didn't come into, into my dictionary like the worldwide dictionary until like 10 15 years later and that's the kind of thing they're always a little bit behind you see and it's a very difficult issue so so this policy is say removing slurs remo removing slurs from the dictionary it seems kind of pointless when you have the school word list um just use that really just use that if you're gonna if you're gonna go down the line go just use the school word list and then you've got the consistency as well which is another argument to use it and it's more friendly to commercial stuff advertising all that kind of thing why would you go this kind of halfway house where there's no kind of benefit to it and it's just you're gonna have to make such t tough calls on what's you know should be in or not that's going to be horrible for people and it's just going to get more and more heated and more and more you know forensic about you know which word should be in or not and i'd say it's just like a, it's a rabbit hole and there's only one way to get out of it and that's where you came from um there is this is there is no good place this goes to it's just going to be more and more divisive and chaotic and hateful angry is so bad so that's kind of the argument i hope i've covered that but there is one last thing to just kind of illustrate i wanted to uh, go through this as well so so this is the post um it's 5 p.m uk time this is 12 hours ago on the north american scroll players association group uh, I uh, don't want to see that. <laughs> so here we go. So um, North American Scrabble Players Association. Um, so I spent the last weekend. So this is uh, John Chu. So he's like the um, like executive committee who's leading this um, for NASPA. So he says, well, we've gone through the you know response to the poll and everything else. So, so a lot of it is kind of very kind of virtue signaling stuff like like the the rhetoric is very kind of left wing um i say whether you agree with that or not doesn't really matter but that's just the, the kind of perspective i'm getting from this it's going about you know it's very kind of i mean uh, i know people won't like this but i think this is very kind of stunning and brave the way it, it's putting out you know it's very kind of like like a heroic like a churchillian kind of that's the kind of vibe i'm getting from reading through it so you know should we be wasting time on words when deeds were called for you know just you know, it's a kind of call to action does somebody who's not jewish have the right to defend jews from anti-semitic language or somebody who's mixed race like me have any say where racial slurs are concerned what about dated slurs that might only cause offense to our oldest members do we not already deal with all this in 1994 um 
one could say that was more like 1984 with what's going on at the moment. But this is the kind of vibe I'm getting. Um, I mean, the thing you can remember is you could have a sense of perspective. This is Scrabble. It's a game of it's a game of words. The words have, words have say. The words have context and meaning outside the game. They don't have it in the game. There's not for us to deal with. The history and obviously you can attach all sorts of history, memories and everything else, emotions to words. We all do it, but that's not what Scrabble's about. It's about playing words to score more points in your opponent. And all this kind of hubris is just ridiculous. Um, and particularly, this is where it gets really bad. So, so yes, I even love that we have racists in the game. It says so much about the power of the game, the community, even racists, not just the hardcore ones that actively spread their toxic, toxic hatred, but the softer ones who stand by rather than get involved, who say, I'm not offended, why should they be? Or, if you can't accept that the words have no meaning, you're not welcome. Or, if I'm not offended, why you should be? So, the, basically what he's saying is, if you say any of those kind of three phrases, you're a softer racist. And this is the kind of divisiveness that you're going to get. Because this is this is where the this, this kind of stuff leads. This is where it goes. And that wasn't even... <laughs> I mean, it's just not acceptable, I'm afraid, to, to call people racist just because you disagree with them. It's just not on. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are angry about this, uh, and I'm one of them. I mean, I'm used to this kind of this, this sort of behaviour. I mean, as I say, my history is I was involved with Wesper, ABSP. I was a big committee member for many years. I did loads of stuff. I got like I wrote the ABSP website. I wrote it, wrote it then rewrote it, and most of the ABS, ABSP website you see now is what I created and wrote. Um, and lot, I wrote the Wesper website, and then I got you know somebody else rewrote it, which is great. Uh, modernized it like I did with the ABSP one. On my second pass, um, I built up a lot of like Facebook pages and stuff like that. I even brought up the. The Wesper Facebook page from pretty much nothing to about four thousand or so likes is at just over five thousand now. And what did I get for all this? Winning the World Championship, run tournaments, everything. As I did huge amounts for the game, I still do quite a lot for the game. And what happened to me? I got uh, I got kicked out of Wesper for uh, because I criticised Islam on my own Facebook page. It's like you know. If you don't like it, that's fair enough. Um, I don't care whether people like what, like Islam or not, but it's my page. I can, it's not like I went into Scrabble discussions and started criticizing Islam. But I mean, Islam is an ideology. It's not. It's not. It's completely different to like criticizing Muslims, for instance. They're two completely different things. It's like you can criticize any ideology. Well, at least you should be able to do that. You can create any criticize any idea or, you know. But, you know, any idea, ideology, any opinions, like like those kind of things you can criticise. You don't want to be just like saying, oh, all Muslims are bad. That's that's wrong, but you can say Islam is bad. That is perfectly reasonable. You don't just criticise a whole writ, like group of people because of Islam. Let's say, I think Islam is bad, but I don't think Muslims are bad. Obviously, there are going to be some good, some bad. It's the same with everything. But, let's say, I criticise Islam. And I got kicked out of uh, Wesper for that. Um, I got uh, booted. Uh, uh, in, in the ABSP, um, somebody tried to uh, cancel me with a malicious complaint, and the ABSP covered it. Um, it's just, like, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things happened to me. I got persecuted and kicked out, mostly from, you know, those kind of, let's say, Wesper, and in the ABSP, I was getting, let's say, somebody attacked me through a malicious, malicious complaint and they wouldn't tell me who it was or even <laughs> who made the complaint or anything even though it was clearly a malicious complaint because most of it was absolutely like it was just a whole spurious raft of nonsense basically and people from the ABSP were there and knew it was wrong uh, like they were saying it was running late all the time when they were there and it didn't run on time it was actually pretty good for a scroll tom but anyway so these are the kind of things that you deal with and that's why I'm getting so involved with this because yeah, it's North America. 
and I don't really play Scrabble competitively anymore, but I do still love crap Scrabble. And this kind of thing, this kind of toxicness, um, this this kind of ideology based um, movement, it will infect other groups eventually. It comes to everybody. It's like cancel culture with me in Scrabble. Like that will come to other people eventually. It might take its time, but it'll go to other people because there's no pushback. If they if there's no pushback to it and they get what they want from it, they're going to keep doing it. It's just simple. It's like if you let a, a kid you know, steal sweets and play, but behave horribly, they're going to keep doing it, aren't they? If there's no pushback, if you just if they get what they want from it, they're going to, they're going to, their learned behaviour is to keep doing it. And it's the same with this. You just got to. Whether you agree with it or not, you've got to you've got to push back against like accusi- like calling people racist. Essentially, is not on, but it gets even more sinister towards the last three paragraphs. So, so here we go. The last three paragraphs has been reported in the media during our meeting with Hasbro. I personally agreed with them that all the slurs should come out of our lexicon. It's the right thing to do, and I will make sure that it happens. Who is this? <laughs> Sorry, but who are you? I mean, this is he's been going on about how he's had all these open discussions and dialogue and thousands of... And he's just decided he's going to do it anyway. Do do members find that acceptive, uh, acceptable? I mean, if they don't... If, if, they're not, if they don't speak out about it, then you're, you're basically run by dictatorship. And they're just gonna do, he's just going to do whatever he likes because he, he thinks it's right. So that's it. That's all that matters. You know, there's no processes or anything else. I've asked the advisory board to vote their consciences. So basically vote my way. Or, you know, you're morally inferior, presumably. I don't know. I don't know what the conclusion is to make for that, but it doesn't sound very good. Uh, because they think this is an important moment in the history of our association. Everybody should know how their board resent on this weighty issue. The thing is, this has only become a weighty issue because they've made it one. And, like, nobody in the wider world gives a real gives a toss, really, about Scrabble, let's be honest. Nobody really gives a toss, but they're making a big deal out of it. And they say it's just going to keep on being an issue all the time. And they're going to have to make... And it's been divisive. And you can see that from this language. I know that if the advisory bars not invoke my... F- favour of my proposal to remove the uh, offensive slurs from our lexicon and the executive executive committee has to, to overturn their decision and at least a quarter of our members will hold me personally responsible for autocratically damaging their beloved game um you know i understand this ability so he's basically you know again stunning and brave you know i'm you know i'm you know i'm doing it for the good but that's the thing is there's a, there's a time to like just do things, like because you know it's morally right. But you you've got to you got to have the right mindset with that. It's not a case of like I can do anything because I'm right and you're and everybody else is wrong, or other people are wrong. I'm right, so I can do whatever I like. No, you've still got to work within the parameters of a normal society and process and everything else. It's like. Being right, or you thinking you're right, morally, doesn't give you carte blanche to do what you like. That's not how things work. And if people... And that's what happens with Chaz or Chop. You know. People, you know, just ends up with a free-for-all. Because everybody thinks they're right, so... They just do what they want. Because, you know, they can convince themselves they're right, then that's... <laughs> where, where does it end, you know? Um, you know, lots of people, you know, the uh, sort of suicide bombers and terrorists around the world, they all think, they all think they're doing the right thing, but, you know, it's, you've, you know, there's a limit to how far that goes to justify your actions. Um, like, you know, every sort of tyrannical dictator and everything else thinks they're right, you know, well, they're just doing it for the good of the people and all this, you know, but... That's not how you do things in a civilized society. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he's just basically saying he's going to do it anyway, 
I mean, it's incredible. I mean, this isn't a commercial, like this, I don't know what it is technically, NASPA. I mean, there is a, there's aspects with, you know, commercial. If you if John Tune and everybody else in NASPA had created it from scratch, doing all the work themselves, um, like a fully, you know, company and, and put their, you know, life on the line, like their livelihoods, you know, their house, all the rest of it. They put their property on the line to build up a company. And yeah, yeah they own it and everything else. But Scrabble associations aren't like that. They're more like a kind of public... Uh, sector entity um, yeah I wish a lot of the time there were more like sort of commercial entities in that you know they would try and do things in a more professional manner but this is more you know you, you can't just overrule everybody like this it's just not on and I hope enough people will uh, speak out about it and hopefully even if it's a futile gesture. I mean, it's not really about whether it's futile or not. I mean, we don't know at this stage. Probably will be futile. They're probably going to do it anyway. But the main thing is people should speak out about it. And at some point, people have to speak out about stuff like this. Whether they're going to win or not, you know. You just have to do the right thing and speak out and just accept. Win or lose, you've done the right thing. And that's all you can ask of yourself. Do the right thing and speak out about it. And try and be decent about how you do it. How you conduct yourself. Um, because this isn't right at all. Um, if you want to make the argument for something, I mean, there isn't a good argument for it. There just isn't. I mean, I mean sure, you use a school list, yeah? There's a decent case for that. This is kind of a, just a a rabbit hole of nonsense and it's totally impractical and it's going to lead to so many bad things i can already it's already led to bad things um and it's just based on ideology it's a it's a cult a religion kind of based argument it's not based on objective points and rational arguments it's based on just faith of trying to do the right thing above all else and and just ignoring what you know, if I do the right thing, everything, you know, I don't have to follow the rules or anything else. I'll try and conduct myself in a decent manner. I can just do the right thing and it absolves me of everything. I'm the hero and all this. That's, that's just crazy. Apart from the context, it's just a Scrabble game, but, but that's how it is. So, um, yeah, thanks if you, anybody made it through all that. I just had to get it off my chest and try and explain things. I try. I, the purpose of this was trying to uh, do it in a way that people would find more uh, kind of approachable or accessible than just a big watch of text, basically. But that's how it is. That's how I see it. And uh, I hope everybody can... At least... The thing is, it's not whether you agree or disagree. Um, it's whether you can like respect other people's point of view. And, and kind of understand their argument. Like, I, I, I try and understand their argument. It's just not a very good one. It's a very bad one. I can totally, as I say, I'm not, I haven't got a particular, you know, I'm kind of one of the, I'm a pretty good rational person, I think. Yeah, I get angry about stuff, but I don't think any of my kind of debate here is founded on just emotional faith based arguments that you'd see in a religion or a cult or whatever. I think all of my arguments are based on sound, objective, observational, kind of scientific methods. Um, so I hope people uh, can understand it, obviously. And I hope everybody understands whether you're from... When you play Scrabble yourself or you just have passing interest or whatever, I hope everybody can, can understand this. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. I'll, I'll put all the list, uh, all the links in the uh, description, so you can have a look for the cell. I think it's pretty much all public. So, and my my page itself is also public, so you can uh, on Facebook, so you can leave comments on there as well. Okay, everybody, thanks for getting through it, and do leave me a like or share or whatever. Follow all that kind of thing. I'll very much appreciate it. Cheers, everybody, and. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy the ride, see what happens with this. <laughs> Cheers.